Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about uh, rate in, rate out FRQ, so free response questions. It's a very, very common type of FRQ, so let's, let's take a look at what I mean by that. So I went back to 1998, which is usually the starting point that I have for like even semi-modern feeling FRQs, uh, and here's the list of uh, rate in, rate out. So 2000, 2002, 3, 5, 5, 7, 9, 9, 10, 10, and 10. There were actually two of them on the 2010 exam. That's kind of weird. Um, 2013, and then the crucial thing as I'm making this video right now is 2015, 16, 17, uh, 18, and 19. So uh, that's a lot of them in a row. And uh, there wasn't really one on the 2021 exam. 2020 was a wash. Um, but clearly, this is a type of question they like asking on a typical exam, so uh, we should know how to do them. They're almost always calculator questions. The only one that's not is 2000 number four, but that's like so long ago that I feel like they've just kind of changed their philosophy since then. No guarantees that, uh, you know, they won't flip back and say like, hey, use a table and a graph and, you know, approximate some things or geometrically find things or whatever. But usually, obviously, they're on the calculator section. And um, I've actually made videos of most of these. Maybe if you're watching this sometime in the future, maybe I made all of them, I don't know. I'll link the playlist uh, down below in the description in case you wanna go through and actually do all the problems or at least look at them or whatever. So uh, let's talk about what these problems will look like. So as you read the problem, you really have to like figure out what's going on before you can dive right in. So what I think you need to do is you need to really know three key things. So the first one is you have to identify what the rate in is, like how, how fast is stuff being added to this pile that you have? And the pile might be, uh, you know, an oil spill. It might be uh, gravel. Uh, what else do they do? They frequently are putting water in tanks. That's like the most common thing. So here are the words that they use to identify the rate in typically. So pumped into, enters, adds, sells for, which is really just money coming in, that's like your profit, accumulates, arrive or arrives, and then flows into. So those are the types of words you wanna look at to see like what is the rate in. Okay, so, and then I always think if I'm having trouble identifying it, um, if nothing else were to happen, there would be more of the stuff because of this rate. So like you start off with, 10 gallons, and then there's this rate in. If nothing else happened, you're just gonna get more and more and more of it. So that's one way that you can look to identify it in the event that you find it a little confusing. And then you also have to identify the rate out. So if you identified the rate in, the rate out is the other one. So this really isn't that complicated, but I'm still gonna like go through it because what if you can't figure out which is which? Maybe you can identify the rate out and then the other one will be the rate in. So here are the words they use for that. And you'll see they're sort of the opposite of the words I wrote before. Uh, because I pulled them from basically the same problem. So uh, the opposite of pumped in is leaks out. Um, the opposite of enter is leave. And then we have removed or removes. Costs, which is money going out because you're making it, so you have to pay to make it. Pumped out. Uh, there are always people getting off or exiting a line if a line is forming. Um, and then you can process gravel. So to process gravel means to uh, turn it into something else, basically. Um, that is the opposite of uh, the gravel arriving, for example. So that would be removing from a pile. And then things drain out of stuff. So to identify this, in, in case you're lost, if nothing else happens, there will be less of something because of this rate. So this is how we can figure out uh, the rate in, the rate out. We have to identify those. The other thing that's really important with these, especially in newer problems, um, which are the ones you'll be doing, obviously, is that they don't always have the same time interval on which they apply. So pay attention to the interval on which each rate applies. So one of them might be from zero to 10, and then the other one might only be from five to 10 or something like that. Just make sure uh, you're paying attention because they are not always the same interval. And then the other thing that you really need to know, so there's three things that you need to immediately identify when doing this problem. The rate in, the rate out, and also the initial amount that you're starting with. So if you know those things, you can go through and do the problem. I think you'll be successful. Let's look at what you have to do with it. So here's what you're gonna be asked to do. And then I'm gonna list like problems where it comes up in case you wanna just flip through and look at examples or whatever. Um, so the first thing is 
find the total amount that comes in or goes out on the interval from A to B. So this is not an, an overall rate of change. This is literally just how much comes in. There's just somebody standing at the door counting the number of people walking in. You're answering the question, how many people walked in? Or there's a leak and you just have a, a thing underneath it that's collecting the stuff that leaks. The question is, how much stuff did that collect? We don't care how much does the other thing. So this is a really important thing to understand because this was 14 of 17 questions asked this on part A or B of the question. So this is obviously one of the things you have to understand. It also kind of helps you get situated within the problem, like to understand what a rate really means, um, things like that. So to calculate these though, if you want the total amount that goes in or enters or uh, flows in, whatever, uh, all you're gonna do is integrate from A to B the rate in, and that'll give you the total amount that comes in. If you want the total amount that goes out, regardless of how much is coming in, you're just gonna do the integral from A to B of the rate out dt, um, and that'll give you your total out. These questions feel like they're too easy, but they're not. They're really just asking you, take one of the two rates, make sure you understand which is which, and integrate it, and that'll tell you the total of whatever that rate is giving you. So, and it'll be part A or B, and A or B is usually like, you know, the easier section, I guess, the easier part. Um, so there, there's like one example, and so this is the only one that I'm actually specifically pulling in this video. Uh, sometimes you have to find the total and then like multiply it by something. So this seems like a totally fair thing to ask you to do. Uh, on 2002, number two, for example, they said the price of admission to the park is $15 uh, until 5 p.m., which is T equals 17. After 5 p.m., the price of admission is 11. How many dollars are collected from admissions to the park on the given day? then round your answer to the nearest whole number. So what you had to do here is you had to like figure out the total in until 17 multiplied by 15 and then the total between uh, 17 and the close of the park and there's more context but multiply that by 11. So this is what the work for that ended up looking like. Just wanted you to be aware that like they look for, uh, they're not like curveballs, but they'll, they'll put like little tiny twists on it to make sure that you're really understanding and I don't know, I guess not just exam prepping, which is basically what I'm trying to help you do. Um, but as long as you understand, you'll be okay. All right, let's take a look at the next thing. So the next thing I'll ask you to do is to write a function that gives total at time t. So just write a function that describes the situation. Um, this is gonna be an accumulation function. So what you need to know to be able to do this is you need to know the amount that you're starting with. That's one of the things that we noted, right, when we first read the problem. You need to know the rate in, which I'm gonna call f of t for this, um, and then the rate out, which I'm gonna call g of t for this, just to like make it simpler. So overall, you're just gonna write an accumulation function. So uh, a of t is gonna be what you're starting at, plus the integral from zero to t of the integral of rate in minus rate out. The overall rate of change is rate in minus rate out. I think of that as being like the major defining feature of these problems is that the overall rate of change is the rate in minus the rate out. So I wanted to repeat that a bunch of times and then I wanted to write it down. So A prime, this is really a second fundamental theorem problem, but A prime is just F of T minus G of T and that is rate in minus rate out. Say that to yourself like a lot. And now typically when you do these problems, you're gonna just leave them um, with an integral. Like usually there's nothing you can do actually because the, the functions don't have simple antiderivatives so you have to use a calculator. Uh, the one exception to that is 2010 number one. Um, so you definitely might want to take a look at that where you actually can rewrite it uh, without integrals. Um, I don't know which part that was. I forgot to write that down. It's like one of the later parts. All right. Now, another thing that you would have to do that's very related to this is uh, find the total at a specific time. So that would just mean evaluate your function that you just wrote, A of T, at whatever time they're giving you. So I'm gonna say, uh, we're gonna evaluate A of B, which would be this, uh, the start plus the integral from zero to B of F of U minus G of U du. I'm using a dummy variable there. Um, and you're almost certainly going to use a calculator. Uh, if it's a calculator problem, don't even think about not using a calculator. Uh, but it could be that they give you like graphs or tables and ask you to like approximate the integral of F, uh, approximate the integral of G, and then you know subtract them. 
So it could be that you have to use geometry. So here's a list of problems. This is not exhaustive because it's kind of hard to decide where to classify some of the things. Um, but these problems definitely sort of like encapsulate this idea. Um, uh, so whatever, uh, pause it and read that. I'm not gonna read them all to you, but you can see there's a lot. All right, the next thing that you might have to do, determine if the total is increasing or decreasing at a time or on an interval. So this is where uh, we're talking about like, is the, the total amount of oil in the spill increasing or decreasing? Is the total amount of sand on the pile increasing or decreasing? You know, stuff's leaking into a tank. Is, is the stuff in the tank increasing or decreasing at that time? That, those are the kinds of questions. So what we'll have done probably, but if not, uh, we would do it here. We're just gonna define that function a of t again, right? And so it's the amount you start with, which is a of zero plus the integral from zero to t of the rate in minus the rate out. In minus out is the defining feature of these problems. They're called rate in, rate out problems. Um, so in that case, a prime is gonna be in minus out. Can't stress that enough. So I mean, it's just increasing, decreasing, right? So um, if a prime is greater than zero, then a is increasing. If a prime is less than zero, a is decreasing. Uh, there's nothing like fancy about that, but because of the way that a prime is defined, we can think of this in a slightly different way. So we can also think a prime is greater than zero means that in minus out is greater than zero, which means in is greater than out, right? So if the rate in is greater than the rate out, then overall the amount is increasing. On the other hand, if the rate in is less than the rate out, then overall the amount is decreasing. I mean, you've probably been in situations in your life where that's a kind of thing that's happening. Um, this idea, I mean, while somewhat obvious maybe, I don't know, is really helpful when you are given a graph that has both uh, the rate in and the rate out on the same set of axes. You can look at it and be like, oh, the rate in is above the rate out, so overall we're increasing, things like that. Um, okay, so what problems will you see this on? Tons of them. So here they are. Again, I'm not gonna read it, but that's a lot of problems. So like, you have to know how to do each of these parts but they're very specific and you can definitely like take a couple minutes and master each of the particulars. All right, let's look at the next thing. So this one is like really common. Determine the absolute max or min on an interval. So this is actually one of my favorite things to do with accumulation functions. We're just gonna define a function for the total, A of T I've called it in the previous parts, and then we're gonna use the candidates test. So I don't wanna describe the entire candidates test here, right? It's if a function is continuous on an interval, then the absolute max or min occurs at a critical point or an end point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link in the description and maybe there's a clickable thing if I remember um, to my video about how to use the candidates test. So, uh, and also if you go through and watch any of the videos for these FRQs, you'll see me using the candidates test. So the candidates test, big deal. That's how we find absolute max min. And it's always on an interval for these types of problems because nothing happens forever, I guess. So. Uh, my one big tip about using the candidates test, don't forget that where the derivative is undefined is a critical point, right? And in particular, in 2007, number two, really good problem, highly recommended. Um, that's, that's actually where I think the absolute max or min occurs. And, and I think a lot of people just even forgot that it was a critical point. Um, now, there is one caveat to all of this. Sometimes you don't need the absolute max or min, you just need to know the time at which it happens. So this you can handle in a slightly different way. So if you only need the time and there is only one critical point, which is almost certainly gonna be the case if you only need the time. So if you only need the time and there's only one critical point and at the critical point you get a relative maximum, for example, relative minimum would be the same, then that is the absolute maximum. If you think about it logically, that makes sense. There's only one critical point, which means that's the only place you either change increasing and decreasing or decreasing to increasing. If it's the only place you're changing, then that must be the absolute either max or min. Um, so the same idea will apply um, to a minimum, right? So if there's only one critical point and at that critical point, you're at a relative minimum, you must be at the absolute minimum because there's no way to get lower. You would need another critical point to do that. You'd actually need two more critical points. So cannot happen. Um, so uh, in particular, 2019 number one C had this idea. 
Um, and when I posted my video solution of it, a lot of people didn't seem to understand that you could do that. So make sure that that's a really big idea. Apparently not a lot of people hit it when they're first learning this stuff. So try to think about it, draw some pictures, internalize that and bring that information with you. So the problems where this occurs are many. Um, here you go. It's like all of them. Uh, this question is on it so much. It's almost on it as often as asking you to just integrate the rate in or just integrate the rate out. Um, so you can't afford to not understand that idea. All right, the next thing. Determine what happens after one of the rates turns off. Okay, so what do I mean by that? You know, we have rate in, we have rate out. Maybe the rate in only applies from zero to 10, whereas the rate out applies from zero until there's nothing left, right? So the questions you'll be looking at are when will there be nothing left if the rate in is turned off, right? If the rate in is turned off, you're not getting anything new. So now the rate off is just taking stuff off the pile. So problems where you'll see something like that would be 2005B, 2009B, and 2010. Um, there may be more. I tried to get all of them when I was going through these, but I'm sure you can imagine that was kind of an annoying process. Um, and then... The reverse of this is also true, um, right? They could say, when will you uh, pass some amount if the rate out is turned off, right? So like, say you're accumulating uh, gravel in a pile, I don't know, and uh, you know somebody goes home for the day. They stop taking gravel off the pile, but the conveyor belt that's putting gravel on the pile just keeps going, right? So like, if that happens, maybe you're in trouble if you get more than like 200 tons of gravel. When will that happen? So. Uh, I don't actually have any specific examples because apparently that question hasn't yet been asked, but like, why not? They do sometimes give you a problem where like, um, they don't turn off one of the rates, but the rate in is overwhelming the rate out. So eventually there's going to be a spill and they'll ask you like, when will the spill occur? It was very hard to decide like what, how to describe each of these types of problems. So like, that's definitely in there. Um, so I don't have an example, but like 2015, number one D is pretty close to that. And I think that might be the one I was just describing where there's like water uh, is, it's like raining and water's going into a drain pipe. The drain pipe is clogged. So like water can come out of it, but not as fast as it's going in. And then the question is like, when will the pipe just like overflow or something like that? Um, so that's another thing you'd have to do. I didn't know how to classify it. So uh, the other thing that you were often asked to do, it's actually the last type of thing I saw that occurred frequently. I mean, there can be other parts in these problems, but they'll just be like, you know, what's the average value of something? What's the average rate of change of something? Uh, things like that, which I'm sure you can do out of the context of these problems. So you wouldn't need it like broken down for this. Uh, the next thing you would have to do though, interpret the meaning of something in context. So that something could be to interpret the, the meaning of a derivative. So uh, for example, you know, they give you the rate in is R of T and they'll ask you to interpret R prime of T at a specific value or something like that. So be on the lookout for those problems, examples you could find 2002, 2009B, 13, 17, there may have been others. Um, it can also be an integral that they ask you to interpret, which I think is a little weirder because it's kind of like the whole idea of the problem, but um, it's been on there. So, and, and I mean, you know, why not again? So that'd be like 2002. So 2002, 2C, they asked you to do both. It's weird. They actually gave you the integral for the total. They were like, I don't remember. It's like H of T is the integral from zero to T of something minus something, the rate in minus the rate out. And then they ask you like interpret H of 17 and H prime of 17. Uh, good problem, but you know, a little weird. And then 2009, I guess they also asked you that. So that's, that's it. That's a summary of all of the types of things that I have seen on rate in, rate out problems. It's really like one of the most common problem types. Like, like it shows up a lot. You definitely want to go in knowing how to do it. But that's it. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.